Hey there, uh, welcome back. So today we're doing just a little bit of bug testing, um, or bug fixing, I guess. Not just testing for them, but actually fixing them when we find them. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get right into it here. All right, so welcome back. Um, we're gonna do a little bit of uh, bug testing here today. So there's a few issues that I'd like to address right away. So first, if we go into our grid script here, and I wanna go to my, um, let's see, I wanna do the concrete slime spaces, and I think I might need to do the lock spaces too. Um, probably the ice too. So I'm just gonna set all of these um, special spaces to be zero. So to do that, I'm just gonna go make sure that I'm in my main scene, um, highlight my grid, and then scroll down in my script variables until I see the empty spaces. Um, click that little arrow to go into actually look at the array. I'm going to set the size of all of these to zero. So um, I'm going to go, I thought I could go up just by doing that. Maybe I can't. All right. Well, um, and then I want to do the same thing for the ice spaces. Set the array size to be zero. Um, for the lock spaces, set the array size to be zero. The concrete and the slime. And once you have that done, I want to just show you what's going to happen here. So um, I have my board with no spaces on it. But now if I make a match, I immediately get uh, an invalid index on base array. And let's take a look at where this error is coming from. So in the grid script, uh, whenever we make a match, and let's go down here so that we can actually look. Do, do, do. We have fine bombs, chain bombs, destroy matched. It's damage special. So we emit a signal to damage locks, damage ice, and then we check to see if we need to damage concrete or slime. Now when we emit that signal, uh, that signal is going to go to whatever's holding it. In the case of, let's look at ice. In the case of ice, we're going to immediately go to on grid damage ice board position. It's going to check to see if ice pieces, and then it's checking these two here. But if we don't have anything in the array, then there's nothing in these positions. It's not even that there's nothing in the positions, it's that the positions don't exist. And that's why we're getting that... Um, that error. So I'm going to add just a quick little check here uh, to make sure that we need to do this. So my quick little check is going to be if, um, let's see, ice pieces dot size. Oops, size is a method. So open close parentheses is not equal to zero. And then I'm just going to grab all of these lines here and tab them over. So there we go. Now, if I were to save my scene and hit play, I'm still going to get an error. And that's because I have to do this for the lock, the concrete, and the slime. So I'm going to have to do this three more times. But just to show you here, oops, I didn't quit it from when it freaked out last time. So let's try this again. To do, oh, or maybe is there something else wrong? There must be something else wrong. Let's, oh, there it is. Um, so if I do this again here, here, and there we go. I've got another error. This time the error is with probably the, do, 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 yep, the lock pieces. So I'm just going to add that same check here. So if lock pieces dot size is not equal to zero and then grab all of these tap them over and i'll jump to my slime holder and damage slime i'm gonna say if slime pieces dot size is not equal to zero grab all of these do that. And then last one for the concrete. So in on grid damage concrete, if 
concrete pieces dot size is not equal to zero. Uh, and then highlight all those, tap them over, and let's go out of distraction free mode and let's try it again. Oh, I misspelled ice pieces. There we go. All right, let's try this one more time. Cool. Now let's make sure that I can make matches and have it not cause a huge mess. All right, there we go. So that's one error down. Now let's fix a few others. Now I've heard on Discord, um, King Cobra pointed out that he was having an issue where when he would make a match of four, the piece would disappear, but he wouldn't see the uh, special piece show up above it. And I tried this a bunch on my own and I, I didn't have that error reoccur. So here's one thing that you can do to test um, yourself. I mean, other than having to wait for a match for or a T or an L. Um, instead, I'm going to go to my grid script here. And with match three games, the fewer types of pieces you have, the more likely you are to have a special piece. So if I go here to my array of possible pieces, oops. Uh, it took me right away from where I wanted to be. If I go here to my array of possible pieces, I'm just going to comment out two of them. So I'm going to comment out the green piece and the light green piece. Actually, let's just do one of them. Let's just comment out the light green, since it looks just like the slime anyway. Um, if I hit play now, I'm only going to get the regular green pieces. I'm much more likely to see a match four here. So you see here right away, I've got one right there. And I played around with this for a while. So see, I've gotten a column bomb, I got a row bomb. Um, and I wasn't able to see any issues. I even went down to, I think only having like three different colors of pieces, which makes it so that you have these ridiculous chains. I'll show you what that looks like. So here, um, right away we have something that would be a color bomb, but we haven't put that in yet. And then we just get this like, ridiculous amount of chains because there's too many spaces on the board and too few colors to fill them so it's hard for there not to be a match on the board it's just essentially what's happening like okay cool that was quite the wait um if i flip out these two oh, okay it read that one as a column because of a bug that we're going to fix in just a second um let's see here and this should be a t there we go just like it should be. And then if I wait for all of this to settle down a little bit here, good Lord. See, this is why Candy Crush has six colors. The more colors you have, the less likely you are to have a match. And on their easier levels, I think they only have like three or four colors, but it's a really small board for this reason. Um, so I just wanna do one more. And this is gonna take like a million years. I'm gonna fast forward through this. Okay, finally. So now if I swap those in there, all my bomb pieces are working like they should. Okay, let's bring this back to a reasonable number of pieces here. So I'm just gonna only take one of the pieces away. Let me save that. Now, I think the issue that was happening is because in that video, I did some of the stuff off screen. So to make sure that we're everything is working like it should, let's go to our scenes here. And let's start by looking at our blue piece scene. Now, I don't want to look at the code so much as I want to look at the scene itself. So make sure that you highlight the node 2D that's the root. Make sure that you have these filled in. If these aren't filled in, so like if you don't have your row, column, or adjacent texture, then it's still going to take up space, but you won't be able to see anything because it's going to get rid of the original texture and replace it with one of these. But if these aren't here, then you know you don't have anything. And you have to do this for each of the pieces. You have to do it for the blue piece. You have to do it for the green piece. See over here. Uh, you have to do it for all of the pieces that you're using. You have to make sure that they all have these textures. So if you notice what King Cobra on the Discord did and you saw that some of the pieces look like they were disappearing, I'm pretty sure it's this because I, I played around with this quite a bit today and I think that that's what the issue is. 
Now, um, that problem I had where I should have gotten an adjacent bomb and instead I got a row or a column bomb. So let's fix that. Uh, if we go to our grid here, I'm gonna open up my grid script. Let's go into distraction free mode. I want to look at the bomb logic. So I don't wanna do that one. I wanna do, I think it's find bombs. Yeah. So here, um, a different kind of bombs. I've got zero for an adjacent bomb. Oh no, that's... Oh, it's because they're ifs. These should be elifs. Okay, so the reason that was happening is because I have each of these set as an if condition. These should be else if conditions. So I'm just going to really quickly make these else ifs. And then that'll make it so that... Because what happened was is it made it... Yeah. So the reason that that matters is it went through here, it saw that it should make an adjacent bomb, it made it an adjacent bomb, and then it must have done the next thing too, because we weren't actually, even though it shouldn't do that because of the forced return. Let's make sure this fixes it. So if we go, I just want to go out of distraction free mode so I can see the debugger. And if I hit play here, um, all right, I want to take down my number, my pieces again. So let's jump up here, and I'm going to get rid of at least one more. And let's save that. Let's go back in. Um, okay, so if I swap this one up, it should make an adjacent bomb and not a column or a row bomb. Let's see. No, it made a column bomb. Why is it doing that? Yep, column bomb there again, too. And this one will do the right kind. Huh. That's weird. This should be a column bomb. Okay. Huh. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, I don't actually have a really good answer for that. I'm going to have to look into that and come back to that in a later video. But um, for now, we have a, a setup that's a bit more stable. So what you can do now is you can make new scenes that inherit from this scene. So this game window scene can be our main scene. And then if you want to, you can go up to scene and create a new inherited scene. And I'm going to call this one uh, level one. And I thought about this, if this was really the best way, because in Unity, it's not the best way to make a different scene for every level, but your scene data in Godot is like four kilobytes. It's, it's really small. So there's not really any reason not to create a new level. Um, in fact, oh, no, so cancel. Um, let's do that again, new inherited scene. Uh, the scene we want to base it on is the game window scene. And then I want to rename this one to level one. And then in my, uh, I'm going to save scene as, I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call this folder levels. And then I'll save this scene in here. Now, you notice how these are all kind of grayed out. That's because these inherit from the main game window scene. Now I can still change the script variables though. So like maybe I want this one to be a smaller board because it's level one. So maybe I'll make it six by six. Um, I still want to use the same size pieces, same Y start. Uh, my Y start and X start I might want to change because it's going to be kind of like up here in the corner, but that's okay. And I'm going to have no empty spaces, no ice spaces, nothing like that. And rather than hitting the play button, which will play the game window, I want to hit the um, this play button, which will play just this scene. And there we go. We got our teeny little board here. Now, we can adjust this by changing what the Y start and X start are. Um, we can also adjust, you know, kind of like how they appear in the scene. But for now, we've got a little version of our scene here. And we can use this to create a whole bunch of different levels. And once we create the different levels, we can then create a level select screen so that we can, you know, 
access them, or the player will have access only to the ones that they've that they've cleared up to. And so now this looks a lot more like, you know, what you would expect, aside from being weird in the corner. We'll, we'll fix that soon enough. Um, yeah, okay, so that's a little bit of bug testing and a little bit about level architecture. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. And I have a little message coming afterwards, so stick around for that. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving a like, subscribing to the channel, or telling a friend who might be interested. Also, please consider following me on Patreon. For as little as a dollar a month, you can earn access to tangible rewards, like early access to videos, backer-only videos and series, polls for future topics, streams, and even individual tutoring sessions. You can find a link to that in the description. And as always, have yourselves a wonderful day.